Hey there, work at home mamas, and welcome to the Mom Desk Club. This is my desk. Thank you for joining me here. Today we are starting a brand new season. I'm very excited about this because I think we can really go in depth on some things that are going to make a difference for you, especially if you are a brand new work at home mom or a younger work at home mom, maybe with some or multiple small children. It can be a rodeo. It's a rodeo. That's pretty much the best way to describe it. And so this season we are going to go into all things work at home mom, motherhood, homemaking, and toddlers, specifically toddlers. I go back to those days, especially, it feels funny because it feels like they were just happening. Like I feel like I just had a whole, you know, just a couple little tiny toddlers and everybody was so small. Now I'm in a completely different season, still difficult, but different because I've got older kids. Granted, the oldest one's seven, so it's not like we're talking about teenagers here, but it makes a big difference even just having a seven and a five-year-old with the one and the three-year-old or the four-year-old. It makes a big difference. So if you are still in those toddler trenches, hang tight because we are going to be diving into all the things in this season. Okay, so my first tip is that I want you to not be the mean boss or the mean mama. Okay, but let me go into this because what I'm really meaning is that I want you to set realistic expectations for yourself and for your children in this season. I look back on those years when I had even just the two kids and um, my daughter would have been like around three and then my baby, my boy at the time would have been one and that season was so hard. Toddlers are a whole different ball game when it comes to trying to juggle being a work at home mom. I always joke that when my third kid came along, he was so easy. He was like the easiest and he was great until he hit the toddler years and he was mobile. And then it was a whole new ball game because he was a completely different person. He was into things. You could see his mind was working on all sorts of crazy stuff. I'll never forget. And I've probably told this story before. So if I have, just bear with me. But it's a story that sticks with me so well because I will, it will stay with me until until he's a grown man and I'll still be telling this story. He was one years old and I had them outside playing in a fenced in yard. They were perfectly safe. And I had a video camera on watching them. I had the windows open. I was listening for them. I was getting a couple minutes of work done really quick while they were playing outside. There were three of them. Should have been fine. Somehow he found a rock and I heard glass shattering. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I run downstairs and he had completely shattered the patio door. It was still intact. It hadn't broken like out onto the ground, but it had shattered. And so I scooped them all up. And of course he's one, like just oh, maybe 14 months, you know, not old enough where he was literally doing it just to be malicious. He was completely cause and effect. Let's see what happens when I toss this rock at the window. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. So I swoop them all back inside and I'm getting a few more minutes of work done. And I look behind me cause he's very quiet and I look behind and he's smushing a banana into the air vent. I'm telling you when you have to stop and take deep breaths, you can't even hardly be mad at them because obviously they're not trying to cause problems. They're literally just curious. What happens when I smush this into the air vent? But man, oh man, as a work at home mom, all those moments always collide all at the same time because that is 100% when a client is gonna email with an emergency, the phone is going to be ringing, your children all need you at the same time and the baby also will have a poopy diaper. I'm serious, all at the same time. One of my favorite analogies for this or stories is by Rachel Jankovic who wrote the book Loving the Little Years, which I highly suggest and definitely recommend you get. And she says that when you have these moments when you want to melt down and you want to cry because you just you're overwhelmed and you can't keep on. She says she sets herself a timer for 20 minutes and she just hustles in, gets in and works, gets in and does the thing, changes the diaper, cleans up the banana smushed in the thing, answers the phone call, or returns the phone call, returns the phone call, answers the email, gets in and works really hard for just 20 minutes. And at the end of 20 minutes, if she still feels like crying and having a meltdown, then she goes and takes a moment and lets herself have the moment. But generally she finds that after those 20 minutes of just getting in, working hard, keeping some self-control, she finds that the moment passes and then everything's fine again. Be patient with yourself. It's okay. These moments are hard. It's not going to be easy all the time. That would be ridiculous. But when the moments are hard, try to come up with some things you can use to help make those moments easier on yourself. 
even if that means taking a big deep breath and getting in and working for 20 more minutes and then allowing yourself to have a mommy meltdown later. I just want you to be mindful to set realistic expectations for yourselves. Toddlers have no standard of what should be done, what shouldn't be done. They're wonderful, creative little human beings, but they don't care about your work emails and your phone calls. And they don't even care if you have to clean smush banana out of the vent. It doesn't really make them a whole lot of difference. It's going to be a couple years till they start to have some empathy and compassion on that kind of stuff. So be realistic and have compassion on yourself because these days are hard and that's okay. All right. So my next tip, when you are juggling toddlers and being a work at home mom, my next tip for you is that routine can be your friend. I never thought that I was going to be the person that was routine oriented. I was the kind of person who changed my schedule up all the time. I never really did the same thing in the same way every day. It's not like I would get up every morning and walk through this morning routine where I had everything just so and I couldn't stray from a schedule. I am not that kind of person. In fact, I'm probably the kind of person who switches things up on purpose just to because I want to change the order up. So instead of, you know, making my coffee and then getting dressed and then doing my makeup, I would probably switch it up and get dressed and then do my makeup and then make my coffee. Like I switch things up all the time and it's not for any rhyme or reason necessarily. It's more just because I just don't stick to routine. That being said, once I had children and became a work at home mom, I realized how much I relied on at least a sort of structure in my routine. So I have a flow to my day. There are just going to be certain things that happen throughout the day not in the same time, not in the same way generally. Although that being said, nap time generally happens at about the same time every day. I'm not a stickler. We're not going to do it at the exact same time every single day, but it's going to happen around the same time. So we are going to do lunch around 11 o'clock, around 1030. It could be 1030. It could be 1130. We're going to do it somewhere in this region of 11 and then somewhere around 12, Maybe 11.30 if the day is really hard. Maybe 12.15 if everybody's doing a really good job and we've got a couple things that we're finishing up. It just kind of ebbs and flows depending on the day. But around that point, then everybody goes down for nap time. Having a routine, even if it's a loose routine, can be really helpful with toddlers because sometimes they just need that structure. Now, that doesn't mean you have to go militant. You don't have to keep this really rigid, orderly structure to your day. In fact, I would actually caution against that, especially with toddlers. But having a bit of a routine where they kind of know what to expect. We're going to wake up. We're going to eat breakfast. We're going to get dressed. We're going to get ready for the day. Then I'm going to play for a little bit. Then I'm going to um, them, not you. They're going to play. They're going to sit and play for a little bit. And then I'm going to have some table time where I'm playing with my Play-Doh. And then, you know, after that, I'm going to have a snack. You know, if they kind of know what to expect, it really helps keep things going per se so that you're not constantly dealing with the questions. Although I will say, I feel like I got a lot less questions when they were toddlers than I do now. And I feel like my structure, my schedule, my routine is even more solid now because there are just so many people asking me questions compared to when they were small toddlers. It's not like they were constantly saying, well, when's snack time? When are we going to eat? What are we going to do today? I don't feel like I got that as much when they were toddlers. Maybe my kids were different. When they were toddlers, they were very easy to kind of direct, kind of like um, trains on a track. You can switch the train over to this track and go this direction. You can switch the train over to this track and go the other direction. And they would pretty well go with the flow on that. So keep a routine in mind, but also be willing to switch up your routine as necessary because different seasons in life are going to require different things. Okay, so my next tip for you is that systems and plans aren't just overrated. I get a lot of flack from people because I love systems. There's something about it that really excites me and I love when a system just works. So if you're anything like me and you just want a system in place, it's okay and you can do that. Systems can help take something that should be routine and instead of making it super chaotic, simplifies it even more and makes it easier for you. A really good example of the way I've utilized systems, and I've kept this going for two years now almost, and it's been such a life-changing system as far as laundry goes. I'm not saying I've mastered laundry. Laundry is still really challenging. I ebb and I flow on laundry. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it goes, sometimes I'm on it, sometimes I'm not. But one of the things that I made so simple for myself when I had lots of kids, I still have lots of kids, there's a lot of them around, but while I've got lots of kids, it is so easy to just stick to this system keep it organized and not make it complicated. And it's made a big difference. So the way I handle my laundry, just so you have an example, 
for my children, this isn't for me necessarily, but for my children, is they each have their own individual hanging bag. It hangs up in the bathroom where they get dressed and where they take their clothes off and all of those things. They're each different color coordinated, so each kid has their own color bag. They always know which bag is theirs. There's no complication. They put their clothes in their bag, okay? This is what makes this system work because for a long, long time, I was washing all the kids clothes together i would wash all of my husband's and my clothes together i would wash all the kids clothes together and i know if you are a laundry snob and you separate colors and jeans and darks and lights i'm sorry i just can't i really it my brain can't handle that system doesn't work for me if it works for you stick with it because that's the point is finding a system that you like that you want to stick with for me this is what worked and so each kid puts their own clothes in their own laundry bag and it saved me so much time not having to sort out clothes Obviously there's a stray sock, a pair of pants, random things that always end up in the bag they're not supposed to be in, but for the most part, 98% of my daughter's clothes go in her bag. 98% of my second child's clothes go in his bag. They all pretty well go where they're supposed to go. Then when it's time to do their laundry, I take the bag, unzip the bottom, drop all the clothes in, put the soap in, let it wash. When it's done, we pull that out and put it in the dryer. When that's done, we take it all out and put it in a laundry basket and we bring it upstairs. The nice part of the system that makes a huge difference is the fact that I got a giant cubby that fits three cubes per kid. So I got four kids, 12 cubes. And I put those fabric cubes in there and label them with their name, their picture, because you know, toddlers don't read their name, their picture, and what goes in the box with a picture of what goes in the box. I'm serious. Sometimes you have to simplify things. So like in one bucket, shirts will go in the bucket. In the next bucket, it's going to be pants and in the next one it's going to be pajamas and underwear super simple and then i have some baskets up on the top that have socks because i found that they were getting really lost so we separated them out of the pajama and underwear drawer that was getting to be a hassle <laughs> but this makes the system easy anybody can come in and know exactly how to do my laundry I'm not saying i have people coming in doing my laundry but if something were to happen and my husband needed to do laundry he could easily figure out my system and do the laundry or if my mom was coming in and helping out with the kids, she knows the system and can do the laundry. Or if I've got somebody coming in to help out for the day, they know the system, they can do the laundry, it's not complicated. But even better than that is the kids know the system and the kids can help with their laundry. They don't know how to do their full scale of laundry, although we've been working on how to put the soap in, how to turn the washing machine on. At one point I had stickers pointing to each selection on the washing machine dial so that my daughter could know exactly how she's supposed to set the washer for her laundry. There's things you can do to make life simpler. Systems make life simpler. And if your kids understand your systems and it's not super complicated and it's not crazy and all over the place, they can follow that system and it's going to make your life so much easier. So it's a little complicated sometimes when you're first trying to set up your system and you might have to change it a little bit because you realize things aren't working the way you thought they were going to work and you're going to change it and try it so a different way. But if you can take some time to think about where you're getting hung up. So when I came up with this laundry system, the reason I came up with it was because I heard on a podcast, this woman's husband was an efficiency expert and he wanted to know where she was getting hung up in her laundry and he helped her work through those spots where she's getting hung up. And I'm like, huh, that makes sense. So if I'm having a problem in my system, where am I getting hung up and what would help me solve that problem? Systems, I, I'm telling you, it helps. Okay, so my next tip is gonna sound really silly, but it's prepare for the dirty diapers. In essence, prepare for the unexpected because most likely it's going to happen. There's a podcast that I'm listening to right now called Homemaker Chic. I've been enjoying them for several years now. And this season, they're talking all about mending the gap, which is so helpful, not just as a homemaker, but as a mom, especially as a work at home mom. Sometimes you just have to realize that something is going to happen that throws your whole day into a tailspin and you're just going to have to pivot and you're going to have to keep going. Some examples of that from my own real life experience would be um, last week, my one, almost two year old decided he was ready to be potty trained. I knew it was coming. I knew we were going to be potty training him before the next baby came along, but I wasn't like, I'd already postponed it. I was going to do it in November and then I postponed it and I was going to do it in December. I'm like, nah, I don't feel like doing it yet. And I was like, well, maybe in January. And I just hadn't really settled in on, you know, when I was going to do it. Yeah. He actually decided that he was going to be potty trained and I was going to be working with that 
whether I wanted to or not. I found the opportunity and we ran with it. So sometimes you're not going to be prepared for something, but you're gonna have to make room for it anyway. And that is just human life, really. It's not specific just to work at home moms, but I feel like you find it a lot easier when you're a work at home mom because it's a lot harder to just control the environment per se, especially, you know, being a work at home person where you don't have kids at home, it's gonna be a whole different environment and you can control that environment a lot more than you can when you've got other people. The more people you invite into the environment, the more people that change everything. So be willing to just prepare yourself for those moments. That might mean keeping a looser schedule. So knowing that for your business, you're going to spend roughly two to three hours a day working on it, but maybe you're not gonna have like a rigid work schedule where I am going to work every day from nine to 12. Maybe you're not going to be able to do that. Maybe you do, maybe you have to. Maybe you have to keep a really rigid schedule like that. There have been seasons in my work at home life where I worked a very strict 8.30 to 4.30 with a lunch in the middle. So some seasons you're gonna have to figure out how to make that work. But if you can put some wiggle room in to prepare for exploding diapers and babies who are ready to potty train and somebody randomly turned up sick or a deadline got moved and now you've got to hustle and get it done fast. There's just so many different things that can happen. And so if you're preparing for those moments of unexpected interruptions, it's going to help a lot because toddlers are just they're just literally an unexpected interruption all the time. They're the cutest things ever and they're great and they're wonderful and it's real unexpected. <laughs> okay, my final tip for you is what do you need? This is a question that I ask myself a lot as a work at home mom because I think it can be so easy to get so caught up in what everybody else needs that you're completely forgetting about what you need in order to effectively get your job as a mother and as an employee or an employer or a working person, it's hard to remember what your needs are. Now, I know that this generation is all about self-care. That's kind of the word. I don't really care for the whole self-care situation because I think a lot of times it implies that you're only loving yourself if you're taking X amount of hours to have quiet time and I don't know, I just, I feel like it sets up unreal, unrealistic expectations for a work at home mom when you're probably not going to have a lot of time for self care. Like you can make time, but there's always gonna be, refer back to my last point, unexpected things. There's always something that comes in and just as soon as you get settled in for a bath, somebody comes in and interrupts it. Like it's just part of it. But I like to ask myself, what do you need? What do you need right now? Do you need to go get a big drink of water? Are you thirsty? Do you need to sit down and eat your lunch? Cause you kept forgetting to do that. Do you need to take a nap? Like maybe you didn't get any sleep last night with the baby and you're tired and you need to take a nap. Pencil it in, work it into your schedule, figure out. I mean, there have been times when I will literally just lay my head down on my desk, take a power nap, and then I can push through for the rest of the afternoon. Sometimes you just gotta give yourself what you need because you're a human and you're gonna need it. So while I'm not gonna be promoting a big self-care agenda because I think that it sets really unrealistic expectations, I do want you to really pinpoint what do I need right now in order to make the rest of this day work? Do I need five minutes of silence? Do I need to get my loop earbuds in because everybody's being really loud and they're not being naughty but I'm on edge and so it feels like they're being naughty even when they're not. That has happened. It happened this week. I put my earbuds in and then everything was great. The whole world got a little quieter before everybody freaks out. You ought to look into them. They're really great. They cancel above a certain frequency. So it's not canceling out all sound. You can still hear your children and you can still hear them playing or you could hear if somebody has a question or you could hear if somebody has an emergency, but it's canceling out above a certain decibel. And so it really takes the edge off of the noise. So definitely check those out. Another example that I had of taking care of yourself and figuring out what you need in the moment was several years ago, I had just transitioned. I think I had just transitioned to being a work at home mom of two. And that was a really hard transition for me just due to the circumstances and the situation. You know, I, I started working from home full time. 
Um, I was going to take eight weeks off. I ended up taking six weeks off because they wanted to know if I could come back early and I wasn't going to get paid for the two weeks anyway. So I was like, sure, I'll come back. And I came back full time instead of part time. And then, you know, we shipped straight into that. And then my daughter got caught with some kind of virus and she was super sick for like weeks and it was needed so much time. It was a season. It was a season. And I remember somebody gave me a gift card for my birthday and I bought a gigantic box of bath bombs. I stuck them in the bathroom and every Friday night I told myself, I am taking a bath, closing the door, turning out the lights, putting on some candles. I'm just going to, I'm claiming that I'm claiming that night for me not for anybody else and so my husband would help put the kids to sleep on that night i would get everything all set up and i would there was something about knowing if i can get to friday night okay this week is hard these kids are crazy they require a lot out of me right now out of this season and my work is requiring a lot out of me in this season and it's okay and i'm built for hard things and i can do it in this season i won't i won't be doing this forever so i'm gonna make it to friday night and it was so pleasurable to know Friday night's coming, okay? Today is hard, but Friday night's coming. It's almost here. And I'm going to sit in that bath in the pitch black with a couple candles flickering and maybe a podcast on, maybe not. Maybe I'm just gonna sit in silence because I can't bear listening to anything right now. And it was, it was wonderful. So sometimes you need to take that. You need to just, I'm not saying you're gonna be able to do it every night, that would be unrealistic. That would be about as unrealistic as saying that you're going to work out every single day. I tried that too. And then I finally realized you can claim a day. Give yourself a day. Say, I'm going to work out on Wednesdays. We're going to do Wednesdays. <laughs> and that's all I can muster. <laughs> but at least if you know you've got a break coming, maybe that means that your husband is going to come home and he's going to handle dinner for one night. And then as soon as he gets home from work, you're going to jump in the car and you're going to run into the coffee shop and you're going to give yourself a two hour break between him getting home and starting up bedtime. And you're going to just sit in quiet in the coffee shop and crank out the last little bit of work. Or maybe it's going to be a bath night, or maybe it's going to be something else. You'll come up with something, something that will just make you excited and make you hopeful and help you to look forward to something. Because the seasons with toddlers, sometimes you just need something to look forward to. I promise it won't last forever, but if you can give yourself that season, I don't need Friday night bath night anymore. Like we're now in a completely different season. Um, you know, the little boy who was a newborn at the time, he's five now. I don't need Friday night baths. I don't even like want them. They don't sound fun to me. Like I just don't even think about that. But I did need it in that season and I took that time and it was beautiful. So don't be afraid to take something that you need in order to help you do a better job and to skill up in your position as a work at home mom. Sometimes you need to just adjust your, adjust your schedule a little bit and you can do that. That's why you work from home so that you can have some flexibility. Whew. Okay. So it's a lot to talk about. I know that it is hard and I know that these seasons are strange. You know, there's the, the quote that everybody says, the days are long, but the years are short. It's super cliche. There you go. It's true, but it's cliche, but the days are long. The days are long when they're all toddlers and when everybody needs you and nobody can even get a drink of water without your assistance. Goodness knows they can't even wipe their own bottoms. And that season lasts a lot longer than you probably think. <laughs> So it's okay. It's okay to admit it's hard. It's okay to take a moment when you need some breathing space and then you can jump back in and keep going. And it's okay if you decide that this isn't the right season for this. Maybe you need to put the job on hold or maybe you're going to put your child in, leave your child with grandma for two mornings a week. It's okay if you need to set up parameters because you realize that watching your kids full time and working full time just isn't working. Sometimes you don't have that option to change the schedule. Sometimes you have to work from home full time and you have to keep the kids full time because that's all you've got and you don't have anything else to fall back on. And in that case, just know I'm here. I see you. I know it's hard and you can, you can do it. You can find strategies. You can work hard at this and it will just be a season. It won't last forever. They're only toddlers for a couple years. You'll be fine. I know that doesn't help at all, but it's true and you can do it. So I'm looking forward to jumping into the rest of the season with you. Toddlers are crazy. The season is fun. It's really fun. It's just really crazy. So it's going to be fun. See ya.